Firstly, let's go to Matt in Norwich. Matt, good evening. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. Um, I purchased a vehicle uh, from a dealership um, and after having a couple of issues with it, took it to a, a specialist garage who discovered that the VIN numbers had been changed both underneath the vehicle and on the windscreen. So this is a second-hand um, car? Uh, it was a second-hand car, yeah. Um, uh, because the VIN had been changed, I wasn't aware of it. I did reach out to the dealership. Matt, I, I know you know this, but can you just say what VIN stands for? Uh, it's the vehicle identification number, uh, so each vehicle should have a unique one, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um, and uh, they weren't interested in helping me because I um, asked them whether they would be able to basically refund it because it wasn't declared as the point of sale. Um, they said no. I then reported it to the police because I was concerned it might have been involved in a hit and run or something along those lines. The police didn't have a look at it, determined it was a stolen vehicle uh, and seized the vehicle. So I no longer have the vehicle or the money that I paid for it. Um, can, can you sue uh, the person you bought it from? Uh, I've gone through legal expenses insurance uh, and they've written to the to the dealership. The dealership are not playing ball. They're saying that they want to send an independent person to do a review to because they don't believe it was stolen. Um, I, my view is that the police have taken it, so I'm pretty sure. What's your question with, for me, Matt? Um, what my what my stance, what what my position is. I mean, are they in their right to? Um, to ask for a second opinion as yes. to whether the vehicle is hundred percent yes. Uh, if you sue them for the cost of the car, and of course, if if it was a stolen car and the police have seized it, and the garage, the dealership didn't own title in the car to sell it to you, uh, you're entitled to 100% of your money back, 100%. So um, you've got a pretty solid claim as long as your expert, the person that looked at it and said the VIN number was wrong, as long as your expert's got it right. But they're perfectly entitled to have somebody else look at it. If you sue them, the judge will say they get the right to have their own expert look at it. How much did you pay for the car? Uh, 44000 roughly. Right, a uh, fair amount of money. So I'm, I'm not yeah. surprised they want to get their own expert to look at it. What's your problem with that? I know it'll cause a bit of delay, but what's your problem with well, it? Well, I suppose my first question is who pays for that, to they pay will. for an expert. They will. They will. And the second one is because the, the, the expert that they want to use on it was previously involved in looking at the vehicle and giving it MOTs and bits and pieces, I think that there's a conflict of interest. In well, that's, that's a point you can legitimately raise in writing with them and say, why don't you use someone else? Because if you do use this expert and there ends up being a dispute, I'm going to attack their credibility at court. Frankly, if it was me, Matt, I'd keep my mouth shut about that. And if the expert does say this was not a stolen car, the VIN numbers were genuine, I'd want to keep that back to use against him at court. OK, um, one final question, if you've got time, just quickly. Is there any recourse via the bank? Because I know it's over 30, because I paid, um, paid them a deposit by credit card and then uh, did the rest through the bank. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, you've, you've hit, put your finger right on the point. Uh, if the total value of the transaction is over £30,000, which is why I asked you uh, how much it cost, yeah. if the total value is over £30,000, not a penny will be covered on the credit card section 75 protection, right, I'm afraid. Right. It's not yeah. the case of the first 30,000 is covered. It's just not covered at all. I'm sorry.